So I wanted to tackle some more short films on my YouTube channel. And what better way to talk about short films than on my Quick Takes series. On Disney Plus, Pixar has a series of Spark Shorts, which is a series of more experimental short films for the studio. One of their newest ones dropped on Disney Plus, and it's a short called Float. Float is a short about a mysterious child who has an ability where he can float and fly around. And this boy's father is a little paranoid over that because he fears because the kid is so different, he's going to alienate everybody else around him because uh, human nature, people don't, t uh, people tend to not be as kind to people who are different. And that's all I'm going to say. It's like a six, seven minute short. And like I said, it's on Disney+. Plus. I think this is a touching short. I really do. I think this is something a lot of kids can relate to, especially kids that grow up with a certain disability or something, or if there's something else in their system that's different from, I guess, the status quo of things. All right, it's very heartfelt throughout. And it keeps gradually building and building and building. That needs this very heartfelt conclusion that I think so many parents and I think kids can easily relate to uh, as far as the story of Float. I think this could have been a feature film all its own. I would hope we do. That would be cool if we get a feature film with this type of scenario with the, the kid floating around and see what he eventually does grown up with this extraordinary ability. Maybe he becomes a superhero or something. That would be pretty cool. Pixar doing a superhero film outside of The Incredibles. That'd be kind of cool. I'm going to give Float four and a half out of five stars. I think it's a great short. And if you have Disney+, Plus, definitely check it out. Definitely check out all the other Spark shorts as well. They dropped on YouTube before the Disney+, Plus dropped. Uh, shorts like Kit Bull and Pearl and I think Stretch and Grab, I think, is the other one. And so if you saw them on YouTube and loved them, they're on Disney+, Plus and you can check them out as well. I might do reviews of the other Pixar shorts, the Spark shorts or whatever. Whatever. If I'm in the mood to watch a Pixar short, I'll definitely share them in these quick take videos. Float is fantastic, and Pixar's quality of shorts is excellent. I gotta talk about Notes from Melanie. Notes for Melody is a short film that was written, produced, and directed by a fellow YouTuber, Chris Stuckman. I have a lot of respect for Chris Stuckman. Chris Stuckman was one of the YouTubers that inspired me to start a YouTube channel of my own. I love his insight on movies. And I think he just has a great imagination. And his writing is excellent. Especially if some of the books that he's written, like the Film Buff's Bucket List. Now, Notes from Melanie was one of the first short films that he directed since the announced he wanted to pursue a career in directing movies going past the YouTube videos. And he had just recently dropped Notes from Melanie on his YouTube channel, which you can watch for free. I'll leave a link to the video down in the description below. Notes from Melanie, like I said, it's a short film. It involves a struggling writer-director and he's talking to a woman named Melanie who is an ex-girlfriend. They used to write movies together. And he's kind of been in a slump after his breakup. And he's resorted to mockbuster type films. Uh, some of the running gags you see Chris Stuttman's best friend and fellow YouTuber John Flickinger, the flick pick, starring in some of these mockbuster films such as The Insect Man, and Mission Possibly Run Harder. Those are some of the standout sequences of the whole movie. And what I enjoyed about Notes from Melanie is I think the commentary in, this, in the short, uh, the fact that it's making fun of what people accuse Hollywood nowadays of like being creatively bankrupt with some of these mockbuster films and remakes and knockoffs. And it's just making fun of I guess the whole industry in general while also kind of celebrating it at the same time. I did enjoy the characters and the dynamic that they share. And it's just fun seeing Chris Stuckman's writing and his love for movies being injected in a self-aware tone. Now, it's not a perfect short. This is one of the first big things Chris Stuckman's directed so far. And 
there's some bugs in there. I think the characters act like they're in a self-aware parody. It doesn't feel as real, I guess, as Stuckman expects us to believe. And I did enjoy the characters, especially the actress who plays Melanie. I thought she was great in this short. I enjoyed the, they had great chemistry together, and I enjoyed the direction it went, and it leads to this really great final twist that actually made the short very much worth your time. If you've been a fan of Chris Duckman's YouTube channel, definitely check out Notes from Melanie. I highly recommend it. It is a solid short. I did enjoy the self-aware meta humor throughout. Tom Flickinger is a scene stealer in this. And I can't wait to see more of what Chris Stuckman provides as a director. He said on his channel he's starting a feature film hopefully next spring. I can't wait to see what he's going to make there. There's another short he directed called Auditorium 6, which he said he signed off for a studio to make into as part of an anthology film. If I'm able to find that with Auditorium 6 on it, yeah, I hope it's a lot of fun too. I did enjoy Notes from Melanie. I'm going to give it 4 out of 5 stars. Again, I'll leave the link to Notes from Melanie down in the description below as you can watch it for free on YouTube. The Mandalorian Chapter 3. Wow! That was like the best one yet. I can't wait to talk about this one. It's going to be non-spoilers, of course. So, carrying on from the previous two episodes, The Mandalorian returns back to his home base with the bounty, which I'm still not going to spoil in case you still have not seen the previous two episodes. And he finds that something is wrong, and he decides to fight back. Wow. <laughs> oh man, I'm at a loss for words on this. This is what I've been waiting for. Like, when they first announced The Mandalorian, I was expecting to see this very down and gritty Star Wars show with bounty hunter action. This is what we get. There's some character moments in there as well. Uh, you get to see like the morality come to play with the Mandalorian, which I'm enjoying the nuances that Pedro Pascal is doing in this role. It's saying something because he's playing a guy in a mask, which bounty hunters never take off their mask when they decide to go into this life. And it's very fascinating writing when you're writing characters where you don't see real emotions and you have to use their actions to do to tell what the characters are feeling and it's very cool how they're handling the Mandalorian. I think the thing I love the most in this episode is we get to see more of the Mandalorian code. We see that our main character isn't the only Mandalorian in this series. There's other bounty hunters as well. You get to see them meet and congregate and come together. It's cool seeing like their code of honor and other things and the stuff that they do uh, like the stuff they've established after the fall of the empire as the series takes place a couple of years after return of the jedi a very vast departure from what boba fett was like in the original trilogy like i said it's very fascinating stuff i love seeing the easter eggs uh there's this one easter egg in a flashback which harkens back to the prequel trilogy and I think it's really cool that even though the prequels are very divisive it's cool that Lucasfilm accepts the prequels as main canon and it's cool that we still get nods to the prequels because there are a lot of fans of the prequels I even enjoy the prequels even though quite a few of them had a lot of faults the action in this is just crazy good especially like the last like 20 minutes of the episode, 10, 20 minutes. It was so in your face. I love seeing what went down. It was a cool action set piece. Oh man, I, I'm just so excited about where the series is going to go now after what happened. They've established that things aren't what they seem. There's some shade going on, especially with Werner Herzog's character who has some connections with the Empire, even though it's fallen. I can't wait to see where this goes. I'm glad we got more of Carl Weathers, too. Uh, I thought Carl Weathers was an awesome addition in this episode. I'm not going to spoil where his character goes, but Carl Weathers had some great moments in this episode. I would say he was the scene stealer 
of this episode. I can't wait to see where this goes. Oh man, as a huge Star Wars fan, I'm glad that we're getting we we have a live action Star Wars series finally, and it delivers on all fronts. This is the best episode that we've had so far of the three episodes. Mandalorian Chapter Three, probably the first great episode of The Mandalorian so far. The other two I liked. This is an episode I loved. I can't wait to see what happens next week. So I'll see you then. Thank you for sticking around to another batch of quick takes. Didn't have as much quick takes for this week's video as I thought, but with Thanksgiving it was a little harder doing some of these shorter reviews. But I hope you enjoyed my thoughts on Notes from Melanie, Float, and the le recent episode of The Mandalorian Chapter 3. I definitely have more of these quick take videos planned for you soon. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. Click the subscribe button to see more content and the notification bell next to it to be notified of future videos. Share your thoughts down in the comments below if you've seen any of these things. Did you love them, hate them, mixed on them? Definitely stick around for more content. I do movie reviews, TV reviews, trailer reactions, and other fun stuff along the way. Hope you all have a happy Thanksgiving. God bless, and I will see you next time. Goodbye!